Ideas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. On today's podcast, we're going to be looking at a few public and private company announcements, looking at Chiron Life Sciences Corporation trading on the TSX Venture as KHRN and the OTCQX as KHRNF. Also looking at Dynelio, Canada's highest capacity manufacturer of premium cannabis infused soft chews. Uh, Nova Mentis Life Sciences Corporation trading on the CSC as Nova and the OTC as LIBFF as well as Peak Processing Solutions, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Australian pharmaceutical company Altia Group Holdings Limited, trading on the ASX as AGH. And then lastly today, looking at sort of a joint announcement from 48 North Cannabis Company, Aurora Cannabis, Afria, Canopy Growth, Kronos, essentially all the largest scale producers in Canada, um, all partnering together with the Cannabis Council of Canada to launch a recycling program. So first today, looking at Chiron Life Sciences Corporation, who announced the opening of its first Zarinia Clinic in Medellin, Colombia's second largest city with a reach to over 6 million residents in the region. Now, the Medellin Clinic, with a grand opening plan for December 8th, supports Chiron's goal of expanding regional access to the company's proven clinical services and medical cannabis products for patients across the country with a focus on in-person and telehealth services in Colombia's largest urban centers. We launched our Zarenia operations in Bogota in quarter one of 2020, and in quarter two, our Dr. Zarenia telehealth operations began. Now, the clinic data shows that more than 25% of patients were accessing the telehealth services from outside of Bogota, and once proven successful, Chiron will continue to expand its regional presence in Colombia and beyond, comments Alvaro Torres, CEO of and director of Chiron Life Sciences. Uh, and the Zerenia Median Clinic will be the first in the city expanding national access and improving on the quality of life of patients in a populous Antigua region. Um, so Chiron Life Sciences is one, launching one of their larger clinics in Medellin. Um, this is part of their sort of long-term goal to really build themselves up to be very similar to what um, we've seen with the Shoppers Drug Mart program in Canada. But they're attempting to do this in obviously in Colombia and I think in other parts of Latin America as well. Obviously, they also have larger scale ambitions on the global cannabis industry. Uh, but within Colombia, they're definitely looking to replicate some of the similar type of strategies we've seen within the Canadian medical market. Um, and obviously are using the successful models and seem to be learning from that. Uh, as again, I've talked about the success of the shoppers program within Canada so far and how that would probably be adapted in the future for other medical models to start looking at. And it looks like in Colombia, they'll be adopting a similar type of policy possibly with Chiron Life Sciences being uh, in the role of that shopper drug mark type of situation. Uh, next, looking at Dynelio, Canada's highest capacity manufacturer of premium cannabis infused soft chews, who announced it's received its sales license from Health Canada, effective November 27th of 2020. So this is a significant moment for Dynelio as we work toward being Canada's leader in adult premium cannabis infused soft chew products. Now, Health Canada sales license is a final step in the process and now allows us to enter the Canadian market where we believe that we can fill a high quality recreational and wellness cannabis infused products need, says Dynelio Executive Chairman Michael Kressler. And I'm extremely proud of the entire Dynelio team that has once again delivered exceptional results and we are looking forward to beginning commercial production this week. Now, in addition to producing its own branded products, Danelio has supply agreements in place with Pantry, a premium cannabis-infused food brand in California, and High 12 Brands, a Canadian consumer packaged goods cannabis company. Uh, if you haven't paid attention to Danelio before, I've talked about them and their massive facility for making premium cannabis soft chews, um, now obviously up and running. So I think over the next year, you'll start to see how much of an influence they have within the Canadian marketplace. Obviously, with the edibles market, they've taken a pretty significant stance um, and have partnered with a few different brands. But this is a difficulty with brand awareness and sort of brand consistency within the cannabis industry right now as people are still just buying whatever's available. And I think that that's where Danielio is going to have a pretty exceptional year is the fact that they're very much uh, set up for scalability right out of the get go. So I think that they'll have a bit of a competitive advantage versus some of the other producers who are usually partnering or doing sort of small term basis supply agreements for a lot of their edibles deals. Um, this is going to be an edibles only company. That's what they're pumping out is cannabis infused soft juice. So most likely within the Canadian market, they're going to start to have a pretty significant market share within the next year or so. Uh, next, looking at Nova Mentis Life Sciences Corporation who announced further to its news release date November 2nd and November 18th 
that the amalgamation between Pills Biosciences Corporation and a wholly owned subsidiary of the company has been completed. Um, so some of the strategic and value enhancing benefits of the transaction include that Nova Gains Pills work in progress research and scientific portfolio in addition to approximately 1.4 million Canadian in cash assets and enhances and diversifies Nova's mandate with the emergency medical psychedelic sector. And it bolsters human capital and personnel who have extensive experience in pharmaceutical research, FDA regulatory affairs, drug delivery, and drug discovery. Now, Pills is a research-driven biotechnology company that aims to develop medicinal psychedelics for neuroinflammatory conditions with a significant cognitive component and high unmet therapeutic needs. Now, Pills focus on autism spectrum disorder, and its initial research is centered in developing a unique proprietary system for diagnosing and treating ASD with a first-in-class psilocybin-based therapeutics. Now, the PILS research and development program is led by distinguished Dr. Martin S. Hossman, MD. Dr. Hossman is an immunologist and board-certified urological surgeon with more than 30 years of drug research and development experience with various pharmaceutical companies, including Bristol-Myers, International Mead Johnson Pharmaceutical CEO, uh, Medical Research, and Axinox. Now, Dr. Hossman is well supported in his research efforts with PILS and Dr. Julia Perdilleri, an established research neuroscientist, and Dr. Vivian Treza, head pharmacy of pharmacology, Roma Trey University. And the goal of both scientists is to investigate the brain mechanisms underlying functional and dysfunctional socio-emotional behavior, such as autism spectrum disorder. Um, so maybe not the biggest of announcements as far as a big merger that's coming together, but definitely is a huge step forward for the research for psychedelics and the connection with autism i do think that that's one of the most promising and interesting areas to look at at what they're doing with psychedelic research right now there's tons of really interesting studies going on with psilocybin and with lsd when it comes to autism spectrum disorder one of the many facets um, but obviously is definitely one of the most hard hitting uh, we've seen obviously the many turnarounds you've seen in the cannabis industry with the creation of epidiolex um, obviously again dealing with autism spasticity so i do think that it's a safe venue of entrance and is very much the right sort of pr campaign that not necessarily for every single psychedelic company but i think for the entire psychedelic industry um, very much beneficial and that this will be one of those types of things that will turn a lot of people's skepticism about psychedelics around because a lot of people have very much emotional stakes when it comes to autism spectrum disorder, for obvious reasons. Moving on next to Peak Processing Solutions, a wholly owned subsidiary of Australian Altia Holdings Corporation, who announced that it has entered an agreement with Timely Beverage Company, uh, trades on the CSE as TNY and the OTC as TNYBF, for the manufacturing distribution of their three non-alcoholic cannabis-infused beverages for the Canadian adult use market being timely as 27 liquors, elixirs, coconut cask, cinnamon cask, and almond cask. Now, Peak's facility is uniquely configured to manufacture Timely's complex recipes and support the packaging of 150 milliliter bottle format that Timely's will use for the Timely's 27 drinks in Canada. Now, under the agreement, Peak holds exclusivity for the manufacture and distribution of these three Timely products in Canada until Timely's meets established minimum orders, and the agreement is for a three-year period. Um, so really... Just another example, uh, very similarly to what I was talking about with Dinelio. Um, obviously, they've partnered with a few different brand companies as well to launch their soft chews. Um, but very similarly, we've seen a lot of these different beverage brands. The specific thing about Timely Beverage is uh, that they've done really, really well, at least in the last year as well, with winning a bunch of different awards. Uh, commenting on that. The agreement with Peak is an exciting step for our company as we seek to further drive geographic expansion through the launch of our second product family in the Canadian market. Now, Peak's facility and team of professionals delivered the world-class standard of cannabis 2.0 co-packaging services that we're working to provide at our own licensed co-packaging facility in Long Beach, California. And Peak's team has already demonstrated expert capabilities with the depth and rigor required to produce our sophisticated formulations in compliant and consistent manner. Um, so, again... Seen this type of deal happen a bunch of times, and I've talked about it ad nauseum now, but uh, bringing brands from the U.S., small boutique brands, and then connecting them with large infrastructure developments within the Canadian market or European market, wherever it's going to be. Um, but that does seem to be the sort of rule of thumb that you're looking at for how brands have been established within this industry is starting out in small developed markets within the U.S. or large developed markets, obviously California and Nevada, 
being the obvious ones, uh, Colorado, Oregon as well. Um, and then you're starting to see those advance into other states, into the Canadian market, and then with the expectation of CBD products into the international market. Lastly today, uh, looking at again, all those companies who partnered with the Cannabis Council of Canada to pilot a national vape recycling program that will help consumers dispose of vape hardware safely and responsibly. And the program will supply cannabis retail locations with countertop collective boxes and will be rolled out to more than 200 stores across BC, Alberta and Ontario. The industry enlisted Quantum Lifecycle Partners, a leading Canadian eco-recycling provider with the expertise to provide and handle the various elements embedded in the vape technology. This initiative signals an important step in developing shared solutions so that this industry can meet stewardship responsibilities on a collective basis, said George Smitherman, President and CEO of the Cannabis Council of Canada. We've seen past leadership on recycling from individual companies within the sector that made today possible, Smitherman noted. Now, Clayton Miller, the Vice President of Business Development and Recycling of Quantum, explains, We achieve a high rate of recycling by sorting, separating, and processing the various vape components into base commodities that can then be reused into new products again and again. Miller also remarked that Quantum is really happy to be part of the solution and congratulates the LPs and the industry that have stepped forward and taken this leadership position. Um, and that kind of leads on my last point for the day, which is something that we should really all be considering when we're looking at the cannabis businesses today is why we're not holding other businesses as accountable as this industry is being held accountable today. When we look at the emerging psychedelics industry and obviously the cannabis market, you're seeing that the level of scrutiny these companies and this entire industry is under, maybe compared to pharmaceutical industries of today and a lot of other industries like the restaurant industry that don't have to meet these same standards. Um, and obviously, even when you look at the liquor industry, there's a lot less restrictions and regulations surrounding production and the overall process. And there's a lot more that can go wrong when it comes to basically the overall ruining of your product in the end of the day versus, and also like dangerous product versus cannabis. Um, and it is something to note that because of these high regulations, a lot of these businesses, at least the ones that have been following the regulations and adhering to all these maybe overburdening restrictions um, have actually been quite fine and unhindered by COVID. Um, and the, you know, this is something that we talked about early when I talked to uh, some of the people from Oakham in one of our earlier interviews that their life pretty much remained unchanged with early pandemic lockdowns and moving forward as they already had so many sanitary steps, so many levels of looking at outside germs and looking at the overall health of their staff, making sure everything is monitored constantly and even having temperature controls. These were all things they needed to ensure that the highest quality of their product and that they met all of the above and beyond expectations. Um, so that way they can have their products to market faster and they don't need to be stifled by regulations. And it is something to note that a lot of the cannabis sector is much more adapted to dealing with this COVID community than many of the much more established businesses we deal with on a ba daily basis. For instance, again, the restaurant industry and the alcohol industry that do not have these same requirements of sanitation, control, and regulations surrounding them. There are tight regulations, but those have been loosened in a lot of ways. And there's also not as many regulators to keep up with the amount of businesses, whereas cannabis industry is also suffering from the same thing. But again, maybe highly more publicly scrutinized today. Something to consider. That's all for today's podcast. Enjoy the rest of your day. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.